Some 16 centuries ago, spectacular murals depicting Buddhist legends known as the Jataka tales capturing previous births of Gautam Buddha began coming up in the more than 2,000 years old Ajanta caves in Maharashtra. A set of 29 caves, Ajanta is among the finest examples of Buddhist architecture, cave paintings and sculptures. In order to preserve the glorious Ajanta paintings and spread the word around globally, a Mumbai-based data management company is deploying artificial intelligence and digital imaging technology. Digital restoration of these murals does not affect the original works. A damaged area of a mural, for instance, is restored by altering the pixels of the damaged elements through mathematical inference of the neighboring undamaged part. High and pixel level scanning of the documented photographs of the original work helps in the digitization process. Bayang Chaya reports spoke to Balkrishna Chulan, chairman of the London based UITV, and Ashwin Srivastav, CEO of the Mumbai based Sepio Analytics. They are also directors of Ajanta Heritage and Culture, an ambitious project that is in the midst of digitizing the Ajanta murals through very high resolution photographs as part of their campaign to spread the richness of ancient Indian art globally. Thank you for both your time. And uh, I think this is a tremendously exciting project to me, at least, because I think I mentioned it to Mr. Chulan that my brother, late brother Trilochan Chaya, who was a very well-known architect, he yes. designed as part of a, a deal between the Maharashtra government and the Japanese government, a sort of a replica visitor center just outside the, the Ajanta Elora Caves, where they've essentially recreated uh, much of what, what's there inside the cave so that people can enjoy it more. Yeah. So yes. I have a special affinity for this project. Okay. That's amazing. That's amazing. Well, yeah, I've yeah. actually been there. Uh, and that's, uh, yeah, oh, I the, the center which is outside uh, the right, Ajanta case. Right, yes, right. Yes. That was done by my brother who died uh, uh, a year ago, uh, but uh, that was one of his uh, cherished projects. So uh, I've always been fascinated. I've been to the caves, of course, like I'm sure all of you have. Uh, let me start with, uh, I, I'm sure uh, you probably know that uh, in terms of the use of nanotechnology, yeah. It's something that was cracked 2,000 years ago in India, and this is not uh, a nationalist uh, nonsense that we hear these days. Uh, uh, this is coming from very serious research from uh, Nobel Prize winners on that, including the pigment that is used in the mural. So uh, what's your attraction to begin with? What draws you to something like this? Um, Ash, 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 do you want to say that from the technological side, and I'll go back to the other bit, okay? Sure, 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 sure. I'll start, no problems. So, you know, you, as you mentioned rightly, Mayank, uh, the, there is so much of unknown knowledge out there that needs to be tapped. And it's important, I mean, as you mentioned rightly, it's not about the... You know, about the nationalism concept and all it's the fact is that entire humanity needs it there's a lot of plethora of knowledge which is available in different ancient art forms and different different ancient uh, even manuscripts which are out there which needs to be decoded which needs to be brought to the uh, the world and you know honestly what i believe that all of this when we bring this uh, you know uh, to the world it's effectively a step towards elevation of human consciousness. That's what we keep on saying. You know, at the end of the day, this is all about making us know better uh, about ourselves, what we can do better. And even in, in some cases, uh, help ourselves in solving some of the problems which we face today across all domains. So honestly, this is a genuine belief that it is our duty to figure out what has been happening in the ancient times and bring it to the fore to the world. That's that's the reason, you know, in short, is the reason why we want to do this. And of course, uh, there are multiple methods through oh. which we go through this, which we can talk about later. Oh, absolutely. Uh, Mr. Chulan, you were, you yes. had your end of uh, the story. 
Yes. For me, when I first uh, was introduced to the Ajanta and, and the work of Mr. Binoy Belt, it was incredible. I could not believe that we have so much history, so much, if I may use the word, our Indian civilization created so many beautiful things. But our younger generation and even our before our younger generation, we do not know much about it. And it was my duty and my duty of my friend Ashwin there. We decided that it is time now for us to let the world know about it. Because the world must know. Because we know so much about the Western cultures. But for Indian cultures, it's only a few Indian people we know about it. Not everybody. So it is our duty to do so and let the world see it from now on. Because I was, I said it to you, that this is our the twenty first century will be our century, and we cannot just talk about economics and political or other thing, but we must also bring culture, art, and heritage and our civilization to the world. So that's why we decided to come together in order to promote and to offer these beautiful art and paintings and culture and sculptures and everything else to the world. This is what we are trying to do. So that's why we decided to come together and to do it. Ashwin, uh, India is littered with uh, absolutely spectacular historical legacies across the board. Uh, why was the Ajanta the starting point for you? Uh, see, I mean, there is something that starts to pull you in. There's one starting point always. And Ajanta has that starting point. You know, uh, the power of Ajanta is that it goes beyond. I mean, it's, it's of course, representation of a culture of ancient Indian times, but it speaks to human beings in a way that goes beyond, I would say, uh, you know, the, the concept of culture itself. You know, the paintings which are there, they have, they have, they, if you keep on looking at them for hours in the right way, of course, then you will find, figure out much more about your own self in the process, uh, which is what the power of Ajanta is. I think, uh, and of course, the other aspect, uh, which is a very important aspect, is that Ajanta Caves is probably the key to culture across different countries, not just India. You know, so many different countries. Uh, uh, and actually, various other countries outside India have actually seen the power of Ajanta even before we have completely seen how important it is. And uh, that what, that's what makes it uh, so important and so special. Because if we start with Ajanta, we automatically start by talking to a large number of countries whose culture, in a way, is connected to Ajanta caves. Uh, and, and of course, uh, the other spiritual aspect is that, you know, there is something special about Ajanta caves for sure. Uh, to, to continue a bit on the technological side, I'm yeah. fascinated by the fact that as I was reading about your project, that uh, in terms of digitization of the murals, your advantage is that unlike uh, having to physically restore uh, such old murals, digitally you have deployed an artificial intelligence technique where you are essentially uh, extrapolating the pixels that might have been in the original. Talk a bit more about that. Yeah, so, you know, when we talk about bringing all of this to the world, it's important for us that you know, we do not restrict it to only a few sections of the of the art. Because as you know very well, you know, when we talk about restoring Ajanta, then there are so many stories which are written. And these stories just bringing in parts will not really make sense. The entire story needs to be brought together. So uh, it's important to restore everything. And if we try to start restoring all of that just by using human beings working on it, one-on-one, -on -one, it will take, you know, maybe centuries to just even do Ajanta, forget terms of other places that we need to work on. So that's why, and you know, that was the reason why we wanted to start this off. And secondly, technology has advanced to a level where this can be possible today. Of course, you know, 10 years ago, you would not have said something like this, but now it is possible. So what we could see very clearly is that there has to be an understanding of, of course, you know, the whole, uh, shall I get into a little bit of technical? Uh, Please, I, I would like that. Yeah, yeah. So, so basically, the first step is anyways image processing, which is, you know, uh, the most important step in understanding the picture or whatever art form there is in, in the way uh, 
the way we have defined the structures for example uh, these are eyes these are you uh, know jewelry these are hands so this is the first step of it understanding and breaking down the picture into all these elements so that's the first step part using image processing there we need to do uh, you know it's uh, i mean image processing has been there for 10 years now in a big way of course it's been for much longer time uh, but in the, with respect to the context of such artworks it has not been done enough so we created our own algorithm using a, a common model called yolo y o l o and then you know kind of brought changes to it where the first step is to be able to decode the pictures into various parameters now once that happens as you mentioned in, in different pixels now once that happens the idea of course is to understand what are those pixels which have been damaged now that understanding is needed again through deep learning methodologies that okay these are the areas where there are problems which needs to be sorted out so that's the second step now the first step second step the third step is the most challenging step because now you need to reconstruct it so identification of different parts of the picture followed by identification of those areas where reconstruction is needed and then identify and then actually working on that based on the identification so for example now we see that in the eyes maybe near the eyebrows uh, there is something which is missing or maybe near the pupil something is missing now we already know what the category of what is missing based on the first two processes now the third step is then to understand that category and then utilize history knowledge you know of domain experts because no tech is nothing without the domain experts right. they are the ones who actually feed data which makes the system intelligent and that's where the whole idea comes in that all that expertise comes in and uh, the way deep learning works is that you need to feed it data of actual restorations which have been done manually so you know the way it works is that you have multiple data sets and then right. when these data sets come in then that's how it keeps on improving it needs to be combined with knowledge on a uh, on a specific parameter level uh, and that parameter when i say is also connected to the timeline you know maybe how uh, is the painting from 800 years ago versus it is from 2000 years ago they are all different timelines the mm -hmm. kind of painting which needs to be done so many aspects are there so all of that is fed to the system which then restores or i would say reconstructs uh, the uh, the elements over there so, yeah so this is the the process yeah yeah uh, Mr. Chillen, what was your introduction? I mean, you have been always been fascinated with Indian culture generally, but what was your specific entry point to the Ajanta bureaus? Yes, we we had to have a certain place to start mm -hmm. because we we because we know Ajanta is mainly of the Buddhist. Uh, 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 paintings and a message, and like I like my friend Ashwin just said, each painting has a message, has a story to tell, and we believe that by restoring it and telling that story, that's the beginning for us. That's the beginning. We have to start somewhere, and then after that, we're going to go to, for example, to Hinduism, to Jainism, and then even to Sikhism. We're going to go because we do not believe that. We believe that what India has offered, has given to the world, the four of the biggest, if I may say so, a very, very original faith to the world. And Buddhism is where we decided that we should start there because the painting there are so fascinating. And each painting there has a message. That message is, it's only when, what, what Ashwin was saying just now, that when you look at it, you can interpret it the way you want to interpret. There's one for me that touches me a lot in it, is where uh, what Lord Buddha was there with his wife, and they were trying to uh, convince him not to go, to stay in the palace, and I don't want you to go. But he decided to go because he wanted to go and find enlightenment and nirvana. For me, that is the touching point. For me, that is a blessing for us to start somewhere. Right. And that, the, for me, that is the picture that made me think that there are many, many other pictures in Hinduism. Everything has a message. For me, I look at the message more than anything else. Okay. You know? So that was for me, that was why I decided to participate with Ashwin and let's do it, not only for ourselves, but for the entire Asia continent. Because we believe that each country in Asia has Indian cultures. And if you go to Indonesia, probably you have, you will find that the opera is all Ramayan 
all Bhagavad Gita and everything else is nothing to do, although it's an Islamic country, but they tend to culture. Their culture is part of that. So we are trying to do that. So for us, Ajanta was the starting point. And from there, and, and, and then from there, are we going to move to different, different sectors of Hinduism, Jainism, and, and, and of course, uh, Sikhism. Right. Okay? So. Yeah. Ashwin, uh, in terms of the number of uh, murals that you have already digitized after the, the high resolution pictures were taken, uh, are you able to share with me what that number might be? And are you, you think you've covered all of it or there is still more to go? No, no, the work is going on right now. I would say the digitization uh, process has been for about 15 to 20,000 square inches okay. of the murals. Yeah. And, and as you know, there are you know millions of square inches in, in the Janta. So the work is going on right now. I see. And uh, in, in, in case you don't mind sharing with me the kind of cameras that are being used, of course, the, I'll talk to the photographer later. But if you have anything that you can share, because I, I'm a, an almost an obsessive visitor from the very start of Google Arts and Culture. I, I tell myself that perhaps I'm the only one who visits that site on a daily basis, <laughs> four times a day, because I'm absolutely astounded by the level of work they have put in, in terms of creating very high resolution pictures of great right. They have done some in India, but nothing compared to what you are trying to do. So, in a sense, you will rival them at some point. So, yes, yes. So, tell me yeah. about the cameras that you use. So, it has also cameras. Is it's, I mean, it's all Mr. Binabar's work which you are using for Ajanta Caves. Okay. So, uh, as you know, and he will be the person to explain that in more detail. But uh, low resolution, uh, sorry, low light photography, as you know very well, is very right. important over there. They have the the. the yeah, they are they are caves at the end of the day, and you know the uh, natural light does not come in, and you don't even want to uh, use flash because that will damage the paintings. So uh, low light photography needs to be done, and I mean the details of the camera and everything, Mr. Okay. Maybe he can do better. Okay, okay. Mr. Chilin, you are in a sense the international uh, dimension to this project. Yes. Uh, uh, tell me uh, at some length what you are doing to push it, not just within Asia but worldwide. Yes, um, we uh, first of all, let me explain something to you. We are, uh, I already got a website which has been going on for 12 years, and uh, that's why my association with Mr. Mr. Basu, okay, right. Darun, Darun, that's why I we became friends. And this is to do for people of Indian origin, okay, around the world, but it countries like from, from Fiji to Mauritius to to Trinidad, Guyana, everywhere. And of course, in United Kingdom, and of course, in now in, in United States, everywhere. So I always a great believer that we have to let the knowledge, also the people of those countries, they would like very much to know about our Indian culture. And my job is that I'm appointing a number, I call them ambassadors. They are very prominent politician, not ex-politician, judges, people like that. They are very, very keen to know a bit more about what we are doing. So my job is to spread it around the world through that. And at the same time, we are also communicating. Uh, I have got, for, let, let me give you an example. In Guyana, in South America, I have already got about three people there that are going to become, I call them, this is my way of saying, they are our ambassadors for our culture and everything like that. Same thing we are doing in, in, in Suriname, in Trinidad. I and mean, you will be surprised to know in Jamaica, there are nearly 75,000 people of Indian origin living there. Yeah, yeah. So what, what we are doing, we are going around the world. We are looking at it. So we will be doing a global launch, uh, well, I would say to you, in the next two weeks around okay. the world. Okay. Yeah, this is what we are planning to do. So I have already appointed a number of ambassadors all around the country. There, I'm, I'm finishing now with Fiji because Fiji also got a huge uh, Indian population. But as you know, and, and, and Dubai, you know very well, is a, is a big place. United Kingdom and, you know, uh, Silicon Valley in, in uh, because Mr. Basu told me, but then you don't worry about the Silicon Valley. I got quite a lot of people there. Uh, so, right. so what we're doing at the moment, in a marketing point of view, we are connecting with our people who will be on the ground. And they will, they will talk to the ministers of culture of those countries. 
because let's say, for example, in, in Mauritius, the Minister of Culture will know about it. And because we have a huge amount of cultural um, centers in, in Mauritius, from Mahat, in, in Rajiv Gandhi Cultural Center, Indira Gandhi Cultural Center, the, the Mauritius uh, Institute, which is part of the Indian cultures, thing like that. So uh, my job is to make these people aware of what we are doing and to connect them and let them share their views as an aspiration with us. And we will do the same thing to them. So what we are doing, we are, we are uniting the Indian people globally and connecting them with Mother India. That is my job. That's what I want to do. I'm presuming there is considerable cost involved in a project like that. Uh, how do you manage the funding part? Uh, is it all your own doing or you are seeking from, say, United Nations have programs that might support something, uh, a project like that? Tell me a bit about that, if you don't mind. OK, uh, shall I save it first? Uh, yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, first. OK, we have spent our own money to start with a seed money that we have created to create everything. We have done that. Between me and, Ash and Ashwin company, we have done that. Okay. We have not invited anybody to come and put their money because we believe that the paintings that we will be having on our site and they can be offered also as to, to, to a lot of our friends who would like to buy a painting from us or they want to, they want to, be, to, to own that painting. So that is where we will start campaigning on that basis, okay? And then at the same time, as a, as a site, we also like to put other products, setting, not, not products relevant to the, to the culture side, eh? not relevant to something else. So we intend to do that. But in the meantime, we believe we can finance it ourselves for the time being. For the next six months, we will be able to do that. There's no problem on that. But in the future, you will find some people might come to us to say, look, we like to participate with you. We like to do that. Then we will decide. OK, yeah. but at the moment, we are OK. Ashwin, uh, so before you answer, I wanted to quickly introduce this part. I'm sure you're very aware of the non-fungible uh, uh, assets that the NFTs that have become a big deal now. Yeah. Uh, now, what you have could massive nft if it is marketed well are you looking at something like that exactly exactly yeah nft is part of the plan for sure oh. yeah 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 it has to be <laughs> no we are, we are looking at that and uh i mean honestly we are creating see when we i tell you something when we started this off and when we started putting in money to do this uh we did not know how and where that money will come to inform come to a back come back to us in form of any return Right, because the idea is that we are crazy entrepreneurs. We believe in something, we do it. On one side, there was a genuine belief in the power of whatever we are working on, the culture and everything. The power in itself is huge. And the other side, there was excitement of tech, right. which is what drives us, right? I mean, what is more exciting than to be create something so innovative, which as you mentioned, Google is creating, right? It's, it's, it's exciting. So for us, these two things are so big that, okay, Let's go into it, whatever it takes. Let's pump in the money. Let's start creating it. And then, you know, if you do something great, we have, I, I personally have this belief always. You just do great things. Things will somehow come back to you. You don't need to worry yeah. about that. I have never in my life built so many companies worried about what will happen later. I have always jumped into it right away. And then things come back to me in some way or the other. Right. Right. That's, that's the belief which, you know, which we function with. So, yes. Uh, so now... Uh, there are so many plans on how we can further utilize this as well. Now, what, one point being with NFTs, the true value can finally come out. Now, we all know how a Da Vinci painting or a, something by Michelangelo, you know, and everything is so, so high value. It is, why is it not the same for, you know, the Indian artworks, which it's have to be yeah, yeah, you know, uh, unknown artists. So, so that will be the future. We are going towards that. We are working towards that. We are not just, you know, uh, of course, uh, bringing it to the world. In the process of bringing it to the world, we are enhancing what we call it, you know, if you want to call it the tangible value of right. that as well. Right. Uh, in terms of the artificial intelligence that you are deploying, uh, is, is it your own proprietorial thing? How, are you, how, how have you developed that? It's, it's our own uh, proprietary work. Uh, we have actually... So there's an entire story behind, you know, I mean, of course, we formed an entire team to do this. But then we realized that, okay, you know, we are 
you know we can form some good teams but we need to have the best of brains so we actually ran a hackathon across india to I find the yeah. biggest deep uh, like the deep learning brains in the country and it was an amazing hit because ministry of culture supported us of india government of india and then there was a university called rishi hood university uh, which yeah. is you know very active in india they supported yeah. us and then of course lots of iits they came together i am from iit bombay and got got the entire community activated so mm-hmm. we actually got the best of the brains when it comes to artificial intelligence particularly deep learning uh, yeah. yeah and that's how you know both of you are sitting on perhaps the world's richest resource in terms of cultural heritage yeah. if you start with this and end up covering the whole gamut of things you would have done such an extraordinary service to humanity because uh, people don't realize the extent of riches that indian art has i i do it as an obsessive interest in it it is astonishing what has been produced across the board yes so uh, i'm i'm so glad you're doing it uh, mr chillan in terms yes. of uh, gets you are in europe essentially yes yes and europe has sensibilities towards uh, great art america yes. too but europe especially because it has centuries of tradition of great yes. art Yes. Are you by any chance involving any European uh, uh, museums or others in this project? Yes, we are going to start first, uh, if I may say, with the Indian Cultural Centre okay. in London to start, and we will be inviting. We will be inviting Mr. Binoy here, or Mr. Binoy can do it through through Zoom, uh, uh, talking to the people. We'll be inviting a number of people. We might even invite Mr. Boris Johnson. on that particular for for of exhibition that we would like to do because the exhibition will be done in london and then we invite the art dealers to to come on that day and it, we leave it to them leave it, let the market take take its course you know so that's number one but we intend to do that around the world by the way in 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 of course in mumbai in new delhi everywhere we're going to do that so the same exhibition will be everywhere and we will pick the beautiful artwork done by different contemporary arts also but all one also it's not right. going to be just one 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 subjects only it will be everything because we believe that this is something we have a duty to offer to the world not only to just our indian people but the whole of asia is looking forward to something like that right uh, ashwin in yeah, terms of yeah please go ahead. no go ahead so, uh, so adding on to what uh, mr avedan said right now so there is this entire set of global exhibitions planned we are uh, with iccr you know, i'm sure you would be aware it's part of the government of india uh, yeah. here and uh, we are and we have actually you know had this informal tie up as well where we will be, we'll be conducting global exhibitions at different centers of iccr nehru center which mr vedan mentioned is also a center of iccr in yes. uh, in the uk in london. london so that has already been confirmed and you know we are doing it pan across the world so that's the step one and then there are a number of museums which have been planned also and as you mentioned rightly european museums are part of the plan even us smithsonian is is something yeah. which we are you know, very actively looking at so yeah so there you is know, a where i am sitting in chicago yeah. has a great cultural center called the art institute of chicago it has some of the yeah. greatest paintings maybe you should hit them too they have a pretty strong south asian department so i'm just suggesting that you might consider reaching out to them to chicago is a great tradition of art so in terms of merchandising ashwin uh, because since you will end up finishing lot of these paintings uh, as almost full products uh, they lend themselves so well to merchandising in terms of fabric for instance printing them on silk yes. or raw silk or cotton or whatever i mean it, you will have a great deal of interest in the western markets if you have say a, a shirt or a tie made of uh, some artwork from ajanta it would do very well uh, I, i i think maybe you should cons- I'm, i'm sure you've thought about yes. it yes yeah definitely Def- that's definitely something which you said rightly we need to consider and we need to start working on that and we have that as major part of the plan it serves two purposes on right. one side it of course you know you uh, know it allows us to uh, reach out to more number of people and it uh, creates a new new brand in itself you look at it that way so that's the right word to use right. uh, because i mean i mean that's a very wrong comparison but you know how a dc or a marvel 
they Absolutely. create the entire gamut, entire universe. Yes. And such a universe needs to be created by us. Also. No, you're right because no one markets like the Americans. Americans yes. can market the heck out of anything. So yes. Yes. I think I'm glad you're setting up as DC and Marvel because they're brilliant at that. Yes. yes. Ah. Uh...